following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to a very special edition of the Power Trading Hour. We're off 38 points on the S&P cash. Uh, 1998 and uh, three quarters on the S&P cash. Volume is brisk at 3.37 billion shares. This looks to me like the uh, exhaustion move down in this. Uh, do we stay down here for a while? Eh, we could. Uh, we do start uh, um, fund buying on uh, Wednesday. Trim Tabs does say we have a little bias to the upside in that. Uh, we do have a great deal of stocks that have been really piled upon on short. Uh, that uh, always is kind of like having gasoline and uh, someone just kind of wiving around a uh, sparkler. Uh, why roller skating? You know, maybe they could drop it. Maybe they can't. Uh, but these super high short interest uh, markets uh, can have uh, rip your face off rallies. Uh, and it's unclear exactly what uh, will move them. What I do think, though, is that there are at least some of the powers that be that want this market lower. Now, the reason I say that is the S&P didn't waste any time of throwing some eggs at uh, the uh, UK by lowering its uh, credit rating one notch. Not such a huge deal uh, and probably not a um, something that was warranted. It's two years before anything happens. How could the S&P know anything other than their lower currency rate? And uh, that is not what that's all about. So uh, I think that there's more than a few people out here that are willing uh, to yell and scream and shake their collective fists. Uh, and empty their nostrils uh, at the UK saying, how could you? Uh, but, uh, you know, if I was there uh, knowing what would happen, I would still say that, uh, of course, living a life not on your knees, uh, bowing to the great gods of Brussels is probably more than worth a little bit of market indigestion. Um, we were kind of starting to move up when they came out and throw the eggs at the market with that S&P downgrade of the uh, British uh, uh, Union. And I suspect that part of that, uh, it just happens way too often uh, that uh, I suspect maybe there's one of these kind of things where you get this phone call and go, well, I think you're probably going to downgrade uh, the, EU in, or the uh, UK anyway. Um, maybe it's time to do it right now. <laughs> I always kind of wonder that there's uh, not enough aluminum foil in the world to keep those thoughts out of my head. But uh, we are off 40 points in the S&P cash. Do have a great deal of volume, finally. Friday uh, and even today, from what I've looked for, the volume in the individual stocks continues to be low. The volume in the indexes tends to be high. This is one of the days where I suspect or surmise that the uh, dog is getting wagged by the tail. And uh, I don't know what else you can say about it other than that. A lot of people uh, got short Soros. Jimmy Rogers is out there uh, banging the end of the world drum. Um, kind of an interesting guy since he really hasn't made any significant money since he left Soros uh, around 2000 and started riding his motorcycle everywhere. Uh, but made a, money, a lot of money when he was around Soros, and uh, he continues to have that. But uh, from what I've read, not a lot of money since. So I kind of look at him as a hanger-on. Maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe he doesn't want to risk it. But uh, that he came out today and threw eggs at the market also, I felt very interested in. He probably shorted after Soros said he was short. So uh, we might have a few people out there. But so far... The individual stocks still are holding up. Um, in fact, uh, on Friday, I had about 90% of them that showed lighter volume than they should have had for the movement down in my scans. 
Uh, there are a couple of sectors that are pretty well uh, off and badly off. Uh, the banking sector is one. The oil sector uh, is two. Uh, but the rest uh, so far, light volume. We'll see what tonight brings as I go through the data. Uh, but I suspect that we're going to have a rip our face 40-point uh, move up probably before Friday. And uh, just too many shorts uh, piling on and uh, the volume being kind of light here. Can we start seeing that today? Um, my guess is that we probably will see at least a little attempt before the end of the day. And, uh, you know, with Wednesday being the start of fund buying, could probably have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and probably next Monday uh, as days where money comes into the market. My thought is that uh, there probably could be nothing more bullish for the U.S. markets uh, than turmoil in the uh, U.K. and in the euro. Uh, as cash comes out of all these markets, my guess is the bulk of it will come back here to the United States, and we probably will have a nice next six months uh, once we get through as I said, this market and digestion. Uh, as always, uh, we kind of like to get uh, and show up about the same time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Ooh, that's exciting. Uh, and uh, what else do we do out here? Oh, we like to start this show off with a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. In 1934, the National Housing Act is in, uh, and is enacted by uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Creating a federal housing administration begins to provide insurance to protect private home mortgage insurer and lenders against the risk of default that helps prevent home lending from drying up during the Depression and lays the groundwork for the mortgage bond markets that spring up in the 1970s and go boom in 2007 and 8. Uh, when they are horribly misused because, of course, you cannot trust politicians. But uh, not much to say about it. Uh, the Brangover, which is what I'm going to uh, obnoxiously refer to it today and never again, um, is, uh, of course, it just seems to me, again, that nothing's going to happen. Even if they sign the agreements, nothing's going to happen for two years. So why is the market so incredibly jumping up and down? Some people might say that uh, this is the end of the EU. I thought that the, eh, that was probably implied from Friday's move. Uh, but at the same time, if you have to be responsive to a market, I suspect that it's actually better off. Uh, do you think that uh, Toyota made General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler better car companies? I think they did. Eventually... Um, you know, we could have been down to a car that lasted, uh, I don't know, you could drive around the block and everything would have fallen off. Uh, but eventually when you have to compete, it makes you better. It makes, uh, uh more happy people that have a sign or feeling of accomplishment. Uh, and, uh, my guess is that, uh, there are a lot of horrible things that the EU was making them do. And, uh. This probably will make it better for the rest of the people in the EU, too, as they uh, start to think that maybe the UK is not the only one. Well, we're starting to break down a little bit here. 1966, we'll be back after this break. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. So what's going on out here? We'll take a look at some of the movers today, but uh, at least my opinion is that uh, they are going to the biggest stocks to raise the biggest amount of money they can. Uh, since they are the easiest sold. Uh, and the smaller stocks not being sold quite as hard for the most part. Uh, at least the volume a little lighter in there because, of course, it's harder to sell those without blowing uh, them apart. But uh, the big stocks, uh, we'll look at a few of them after the break. But a lot of uh, pushing out here uh, for that. Uh, analog devices, a uh, bad day at BlackRock for uh, the Sox. Uh, this goes back into this gap up that had 2.4 million. Already have 2.1 million out here, uh, but uh, you need really probably I'm going to say 3.2 million for this uh, push down from May 18th on ADI. But uh, eh, I don't know if you can say anything other than a big trading range so far. Some of these uh, other stocks, uh, not a big move in that one. Let's take a look at AMAT. Um, this one kind of looks like it's rolled over. Had a lot of volume on Friday. Uh, not so much today, though. And then this comes back to a lot of these stocks with lighter volume. Uh, the 20th of May, this uh, came up on 53.4 uh, million shares. It's down with uh, 12 million shares today. And uh, what that tells me is that uh, this would be probably... A good sign for the Sox at about 21 bucks, maybe 20.75. Uh, you can find some kind of buy in this one, but even at the light volume we have today, this thing may not get down past 21.50. You're going to have to see more volume before the end of the day. A hey, Arista Networks, another one down. This one does have more volume. Uh, this is the second gap down. Look for one more, and uh, then the exhaustion move on it. Uh, this is the reverse of the three-gap play that we showed uh, in to the upside in Deutsche Bank. Uh, this is to the downside. You would want to look for one more big gap out here. May test of $55, and generally that's the end of it. But, of course, you're going to need light volume. This one does not have it, so it's one I would not play. Uh, but look for where well, you get two gaps like this. 
look for the third. A lot of times it'll uh, extend, the second one will extend a day or two or three, and then you get that last gap, uh, gap down. But uh, one of the things you don't like to see, uh, we've been talking about these gaps or the uh, banks since last week. We did get the major break uh, today in Barclays, BCS, down to $6.76 for the low uh, with one point, uh, 130 uh, million shares. Um, so pretty much everything you're looking for here, uh, this is the throw the baby out with the bathwater kind of trade. And you have to watch these very closely. But uh, nine out of ten times, I would say that today is the exhaustion move in that stock. Does not mean that you want to buy it. It does mean, though, that for the most part, for a little while, uh, you don't want to be jumping up and down on this one, suspecting it's going much lower. A lot of times you drift back up, maybe to this eight and a half dollar level, uh, and that is when the next ABC starts moving down. Uh, but for the most part, you really have to watch uh, these um, for a while. Uh, they tend to be more U bottoms than V bottoms, but keep an eye on it. Uh, BT Group, another one out here uh, in the British Telecom Group. Uh, this one, of course, uh, down with heavy volume on Friday. Uh, much lighter volume out here today for British Telecom. Um, not actually quite sure why this company would be so affected since mostly everything they do is in the UK. They do do a little thing, a little bit outside of it. Uh, but the uh, lower pound and a great deal of what they're doing out there, probably not so bad. This one has come up off the bottom on lighter volume today. Again, most of these will need some level of consolidation over time. Uh, let's see what else do we have out here. DCM, DTN, not a real good signal on that one. Version Corp, KBE. Uh, nice big one down here with the uh, banks. Volume did increase in this today, KBE. Uh, looks like 2628 is on deck. The KRE, uh, which is the regional banking index, has broken the last major low this thing was going after, which is the April 7th low with 5.4 million shares with 9.7 million shares so far. So we've got that. Man uh, Power Group, I guess you're not going to be hiring a lot of people uh, with this. This broke through the low on Friday, a gap back down. Uh, today went down to 5726 uh back into the 60s now uh but uh you know way off the uh, high um and who knows if that's a bad tick but i'll have to check tonight uh to take a look at it uh, the socks looking pretty horrifically bad second gap down in uh maximum integrated and of course continued down lower but guess what no volume compared to friday uh, and uh, I think uh, you can see that a lot of people gave it up on Friday. Today, down again, but uh, no kind of volume. We will have to watch the close out here to see if that comes in. NXPI, of course, uh, hand in hand with Apple. Uh, this has two gaps down. Volume did pick up on Friday, not all that much. Uh, this one, a uh, little bit more volume today. Probably it will exceed on Friday. Now, to this, uh, I would have to say that the... Uh, you want to watch Apple on this one because, of course, it is directly tied to the sales chain. $61.61. Let's take a quick look at Apple and see what it is up to today. Uh, Friday had a lot of volume. Today, not so much. It's back at this gap up that had 62 million shares, uh, about 32 million shares so far. So you can see probably the lack of big action in Apple. Even with all this action, the energy so far on this leg down has been a little bit less than the action up. I suspect that this $90, maybe a hair under 90 bucks uh, back up to 101 is uh, a bigger trading range unless they can bust it down. And uh, I don't see a lot of that. Another one, uh, um, semiconductor ON, uh, another one, uh, heavy volume on Friday, not so much today. Uh, and we'll have to see how the volume comes in on the end of the day. Uh, but uh, certainly your master uh, volume was 14.3 million shares on Friday today, 6.1 million shares. So a lot more price destruction out here, but uh, not as many people 
throwing the baby out with the bathwater on this. When we look at the SMHs, um, you do have that second uh, gap down today. Uh, what you want to be looking at is for the possible third gap up on this one. So, uh, you know, you kind of, you certainly had lots of volume on Friday. You have um, probably going to have similar volume today. So I could say that uh, the SMHs could easily see the $50.88 low come in on this one. Um, but uh, the question is, when does that come out? My guess is probably next week. I think we're probably making some kind of low in here um, before the end of the day, uh, looking at this, especially the volume, uh, since we've come back off the first pop we had of today. Uh, and going into fund buying, my guess is there's a lot of shorts that need to cover. Uh, they will wait for a bounce and then pounce on the market yet again. But, um, you know, 2040 eh, this week certainly looks possible to me. At that point, we'd have to look and see whether this thing can get back up to 2050, 2070. But uh, that's what I'm looking for, 2040 this week. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we got a ton of stocks out here giving um, some low volume tests. We'll talk about those tomorrow. I'll have them in the newsletter in the morning. But um, you got to think that we've got at least an attempt coming out here before the end of the day. And I don't think uh, kind of the wimpy attempt we had before, but a pretty good uh, attempt probably 
uh, that will at least take us back up to 2015. Uh, now, could we roll all the way down to the bottom before the close of the day still? Uh, we can, but uh, I suspect that if we start moving up, we'll probably start seeing a little uh, short covering. And at least for a few days, maybe into next week, we may have seen at least a temporary bottom in this market. 3.6 a billion shares uh, out here. And uh, we've got some big movers. I'll cover one of these out here. Kind of interesting to see uh, this one. Uh, to do is uh, go back up here. Where did it go? Come on, come back here. This one's really fading fairly quickly. GWPH. It's always highly short. Uh, and uh, it is one of the more volatile stocks out here. I'm sorry, Dave. Oop, that's not the one I want. Where's the one? Not good evening, Dave. Not, uh, I'm sorry, Dave. Uh, it is, where it is? Dave's not here. That's it. Dave's not here. GW Pharmaceuticals, if you do not know, um, is certainly uh, kind of a giving a, a very interesting signal out here. Uh, if you're not familiar with this company, it is the only company with a license to make drugs uh, from the uh, cannabis plant, if you know what I mean. Uh, Dave's not here! If you, know, if you were a child of the 70s, you will know that voice and that name, Cheech and Chong. Anyway, it's not, uh, apparently all the profits for this one have gone up in smoke. See what I did there? <laughs> oh, I feel so clever. Uh, but this thing popped up now. It had a, a fairly decent uh, pop up in trials before. The problem with uh, these uh, when they do pop so well is you kind of have to take your money fairly quickly because guess what? If uh, these folks own this stock, they probably own other uh, stocks. And guess what? Those stocks are not winning. Generally, unfortunately, uh, most traders do the wrong thing. They sell the winners and they hang on to the losers. My guess is that uh, a lot of people liked the winner out here today, thought they had a chicken dinner, and uh, have been selling it off all day long. But um, there are some decent drugs to probably come out of marijuana. Uh, the one that, that they got uh, semi-approval on today and some good results is one for, uh, I want to say, uh, epileptics. Uh, I actually said it right. Generally, those big words do not fly out of my mouth because I'm pretty quiet and don't talk a lot all day other than this one hour. But uh, they had some pretty good um, results for seizures for uh, epilepsy, and that's what made this thing spike. Uh, of course, uh, they also have some other things that they're working on, which is why this is actually a big spike out here for March 14th, and a huge gap, I suspect, is eventually going to get filled. Uh, but uh, not a bad company. It's just, uh, man, you've got to commit to this. It's a uh, red or black kind of move uh, to be in this one. Uh, the big problem was that uh, Mr. Kramer drove this thing up before any of the results came out. Some of the results uh, failed on some of the drugs they were working on. It came all the way back down to 3583. And then, of course, when everybody was uh, wiggled out of it, uh, the uh, truth of the matter came out with the big study on one of the other drugs that they're working on. So there's a little bit of this already in it, so I can give you that. But at the same time, it's one of those stocks on a day where uh, a lot of people uh, run to the exits as fast as they can. Uh, to, to do What else do we have going on out here for the big movers? Um, you know... We kind of did Barclays already. Um, if anybody's been reading my Tech Insider, I think that everybody's pretty familiar with uh, my view on hard drives, the kind of a thing of the past. Uh, <laughs> oh, I like the comments in the den. Anyway, uh, Seagate Technology STX down, but not a lot of volume, actually. This thing could finally be making a test of the low, which is May 12th. Uh, my guess is there isn't a lot of future for these companies. Um, uh, Western Digital, of course, bought its own memory company so that it could be active. 
uh, in hard drives. I just suspect it's the wrong memory company. Uh, it will get them through the next year or two years. That probably makes the CEO look good and let him keep his overpaid salary for a little while. But uh, whether it's Seagate or whether it's Western Digital, it's very tough for me to see that these companies actually are able to compete with the new memory technologies down, coming down the line at all, um, especially with, as we've talked about, Intel actually putting a great deal of the memory uh, into uh, the chips themselves. We'll look at Intel right after. A little bit more uh, volume in Western Digital. It did get back up to this $50 level uh, and then pretty much roll back over. Um, the problem is these things are so amazingly short now that everybody's gotten on it. When we were shorting it, uh, Western Digital was in the 110 range. Uh, I don't like to be uh, down here when everybody and their dog is short. Too easy to get uh, squeezed out of these things with any, trying to have any kind of manageable risk reward. Once everybody is aware of the story, uh, it becomes uh, somewhat problematic. Although down on uh, at least decent volume so far. My guess is this is going to probably take a few more years for everybody to actually figure out that uh, Intel uh, has them by the short hairs, whatever that means. I'm sure it's a military term. Uh, Intel, as we said, uh, none of these semiconductors are looking that good today. Heavy volume on Friday, not so bad out here today. Let's check out here. And we're, well, we're trying to find some kind of low just under this 2000 level on the S&P cash. Volume has kind of really pulled back in in the last 30 minutes. Uh, so we shall see. As I said, I think probably maybe next Tuesday um, is makes for a good uh, uh, B to C leg if you are bearish out here. Um, we could have just a huge washout uh, and uh, it all forgiven, uh, kind of like, a, 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 what was it, uh, August of last year and January of this year, um, they gave a crash and everybody just ignored it. Uh, maybe we will have a, a similar thing. Of course, Intel actually had given a fairly bad signal and we talked about that. It had tested the 3275 with 49 million shares with 22 million shares on June 23rd. So uh, not a big surprise. You shouldn't have been long this thing come Thursday out here with it making a new high with a less than half of the volume. That should tell you a great deal. Uh, this is the second gap down. 29.50 kind of puts you in that uh, bigger trading range. Um, but again, on a day like this, uh, if you're a big fund and you need cash, if you're against margins and you've got to raise cash, you can sell a small stock, but guess what? You're not going to, one, get a lot of cash, and two, all you're going to do is destroy the price. Uh, if you need a lot of cash quickly, you can't go to the uh, lending window. You sell these big cap names like Intel and Microsoft. When we come back, we'll uh, look at Microsoft and see what we can divide. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EvaBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally rated performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. 
Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, yeah, Independence Day stunk. Who would have thought that a bad ripoff of a previous movie that you waited 20 years had to stink? But uh, I guess Will Smith is probably happy he wasn't in that uh, smeller. Came out over the weekend. Didn't do well. Uh, pretty rotten uh, tomatoes reviews, too. I was hoping for a good movie to come out, a big movie. Uh, I stayed home and watched The Day of the Jackal. Cost four bucks on Amazon, but still much better movie than I think Independence Day ever was. And I mean the 1973 Day of the Jackal not that horrible 1998 uh, stinker that they came out with. Uh, and was it Edward Fox? Still want a great movie if you get a chance to see it. That and The Name of the Rose. I had a double feature. Uh, also a great movie if you've not seen it. It's about an, uh, a mystery in an abbey. Also great. Uh, let's go back to the market. Already in progress. The market's trying to get back up above 2,000 and there's a a lot of egg throwers are still hanging around, uh, putting a little yolk on this market. 3.7 million shares, or 3.7 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. Uh, my guess is they're going to try to keep everybody out of this market uh, before the end of the day. But it seems to me like I am uh, looking at some tape uh, during the breaks. And it does look fairly decent out here. It looks like... There are some people out here kind of sniffing around, kind of like when my dogs go to the go outside. Uh, they're more interested in sniffing than actually doing something. Of course, I think the longer they think they sniff, the longer I'll walk them. Uh, let's go back out here. T -t 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 we looked at manpower. We looked at NXPI. We looked at probably everything in that list. Let's go to my list of... Uh, tests from Friday and see how these are working out. Uh, ePay uh, broke through the bottom, but uh, like I said, uh, a lot of these stocks had a lot of heavy volume. Uh, in this case, you had a spike low on April 29th with 3.4 million shares, down for with just uh, 250,000 shares today. So it's not like these things are really uh, piping up. I imagine a lot of these are going to be examples of what we're looking for. Edwards Life Sciences giving a very bullish signal out here in the biotech space. Nice gap up on April 4th with 9 million shares back into it with less than a fourth of that so far today. What else do we have out here? Uh, the Hong Kong index shares. I wanted to see these things ex uh, expand as they broke through the May 19th. Low uh, with, uh, what is that, 1868, 5.5 million shares with 4.2 million shares today. It looks like it's going to close back in the trading range, uh, or certainly could. EWI, the Italy shares, um, looks like they sleep with the fishes. And Lou Carbazzi, 
uh, very uh, nice uh, volume, 5.5 million shares on Friday, which blew through that uh, February 11th low. Uh, but not a lot of follow through today, 2.2 million shares. Uh, let's see, gold stocks, predictable. Uh, Gilead Science is another one I was looking at in this sector. Uh, you uh, have a 12 million share low on May 19th. Uh, you just had uh, the same on Friday, but today uh, volume is going to probably come in much lighter. Um, very interesting to see them blow that sector apart today. Uh, Gigamon. Uh, this one did go above its previous high. I never really actually had a day where it was trying to go through the previous high of uh, with 2.8 million shares versus the 2.2 going back to April 29th. Went a little higher, came back into the trading range. Not a bad-looking stock. It did have volume when it broke through the high, so you'll have to look at that. Uh, of course, the financial stocks all get in a drumming, uh, being beat like a redheaded stepchild. Heavy volume on Friday, not so much today. Uh, 27 million, yeah, a little over 27 million. This goes to the consolidation range that went from March 1st through pretty much uh, April 7th out here and is acting as a support in that level. Uh, KBR, uh, this one's going down to test its low. Again, this one, not too bad. In fact, this is probably more like most of the stocks I was looking at over the weekend, and that was there just wasn't a whole lot of volume. Now, we've got a ton today, so maybe tonight we come back in here. But uh, again, my thoughts, this is the exhaustion move. Uh, you're probably setting up the beat to see if you're bearish and a bottom if you are bullish. We'll look at the volumes tonight, uh, but uh, that should be interesting. Um, anyway, uh, KBR on this one, 1.1 million shares going down to test the 1161 low from February 11th. Uh, that had 1.5 million shares. Probably going to get close to that today, but certainly not a massive amount of volume. You have to really dislike that it did not hold the gap up from February 26, as we said. Now let's check back in with the S&P. Uh, 1998 on the S&P cash, 3.76 billion shares. McCormick and Company. Man, I think they think they're going to buy a lot of uh, Montreal uh, uh, seasoning for this summer. Uh, I went up to this high, had a lighter volume, but uh, no real sign of weakness in this one. Uh, MKC, strong like bull. Uh, very interesting out here, even though it did test the April 4th high of $100.91 with uh, half the volume uh, today. Very light volume, 627,000 shares so far. So not a big signal on that one, even though it did press higher with lighter volume. Probably find out earnings are coming on it fairly soon. Uh, Monster Worldwide, if you're hiring people, of course, this is an interesting company. Now, this one, very interesting, is this massive spike down on February 11th at $2.43, 10 million shares. We've gone through that today, but with 1 million shares. Uh, is that telling you something out here? ONB, uh, not a lot in that one. Priceline uh, certainly was one that in retrospect I probably should have been looking at as a short. It certainly looked that way coming into the uh, Thursday close out here. Um, I, I was hoping volume was going to come down just a little and that I'd get a chance. Of course, it broke away on Friday morning. Anybody uh, looking at uh, higher uh, dollar and lower uh, EU and uh, the uh, pound kind of has to think that uh, not a lot of people are going to be flying uh, for a while uh, and came off very hard. But again, volume about half of what it was on Friday. So uh, a huge move down. Uh, someone got rich if they had the puts on that gal. Uh, to, to, to Robert Half International, I want to see how this one broke through the previous low. I had uh, 2.5 million shares, 2.6 million shares on Friday. Today, 1.6 million shares, which is still equal to the February 11th low. You would have liked to have seen that really expand today. Uh, about the same. So some of these giving a little bit more out here. Charles Schwab, 
the old Schwabi out here, two gaps down, looking for a third to fill these other gaps that go back to uh, February 16th and February 11th. So a lot of these things uh, kind of given a fairly decent roadmap of where they're going. Some of them a little tougher. SLV out here, uh, certainly light volume tests on Friday. We'll talk about that when we come back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, they're predicting the end of the world here. 1944, just a couple points up off the lows of the day on the S&P cash volume, 3.8 billion shares. So we do have a lot of volume out here. The question is, do we have some funds uh, that are going bankrupt out here uh, now with about a 100-point move? And the general answer I thought would have been that these guys would have been washed out this morning. Uh, that, that's still going on makes me wonder if this is not part of uh, something true, just because uh, the boy cried wolf doesn't mean eventually there isn't a wolf. I still suspect, though, that uh, we are probably going to get a bounce out of this market before we see a significant move back down. I mean, we basically, what, uh, 110 points, 100 and, yeah, 110, 120 points down. Uh, what does that tell you? without uh, really much of a, a, of a daily move. 
and normally that means that you've got a lot of people on the wrong side of the market. Once those uh, positions are filled, normally you have a huge displacement that pops yet the other way. So uh, we'll watch for that. I thought maybe it would happen today. Maybe it happens in the next few days. I bought some uh, out-of-the-money calls again, and uh, we shall look. Not the cheap kind, actually the expensive kind, but uh, the expensive kind that will have me only losing a few dollars on actually maybe 2 or $3 dollars on uh, stocks in the $300 range. So um, options still a good opportunity out here to keep your risk low and your opportunities high. We'll have to see how the uh, market comes in for the close. Of course, uh, Tom O'Brien will be calling the last inning of the day uh, and uh, the wrap up in the four o'clock hour as it is Monday. Uh, but we will have to see. I just, it just seems to me like an awful lot of movement for something that isn't going to happen for a year and a half, probably more like two years. So eh, maybe this is a lot more overblown in the short term than it should be. Um, unless everybody's truly saying, you know, that this is a nuclear bomb out there, just went off and we're all, uh, we're all fried. Time to buy the M16s. Forget about gold. Eh, I don't buy it. Planning on the end of the world uh, is good, but uh, it will only pay off once. And guess what? If you're short, there won't be anybody on the opposite side uh, to uh, pay you off. So keep an eye on it. Anyway, uh, lastly, the uh, uh, SLV, kind of interesting. You had uh, big volume on Friday up against this April 29th high that had 15 million shares. You got into it with 36 million shares. You did not hold that uh, 3609 high. Came two cents short. A little bit of pullback out here. You had the volume. You didn't have uh, the juice to keep uh, up there. But, uh, of course, a lot lower today. Came back, made a little hammer out here. Got to probably get one more run at 17.09. And yeah, probably going to be kind of difficult as long as the dollar continues to be strong like bull. $96.46 on the current contract. That's up a buck today. And uh, the headwinds in the metals department. Uh, what else do we have out here? We have enough time for one more. United Therapeutics wanted to see how this one did. It was hanging out on Friday. Um, 2.4 million shares on April 28th. On Friday, 1.3 million shares. Today, just 380,000 shares. So there's some out here, as I said, that don't have a great deal of volume, kind of moving with the market. But uh, watch for these to be the first ones to pop when something actually happens. 1995 on the S&P cash, 3.88 billion shares. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.